TYT Sports, everybody. Ben Mankiewicz, J.R. Jackson out there along with Jesus. Jim Beheim, head coach of the uh, Syracuse Orange Men, or I think they're still called the Orange Men. I don't think they had to change their name. That was just St. John's. Jim Beheim is a grumpy old man. They beat West Virginia. It's a big win, but Jim Beheim is bitter and surly and angry. J.R., did you know this about uh, Jim Beheim? I always thought he was a sweet old man. I know. That's what I thought, too. But then it turns out in his press conference, it's like 40 seconds into the press conference, and then he starts getting pissed at what people were writing about him earlier in last week because he lost to Rick Pitino. And I guess they'd lost six of eight games, and the, he had lost six straight, now seven straight, to Rick Pitino, who's now the coach at Louisville. And Jim Baham doesn't like reading about how he'd lost six straight to Rick Pitino at Louisville. So he gets incredibly irritated, and he starts calling out the two local reporters at the Syracuse paper, uh, Donna DeTota and Mike Walters. So uh, here's the first clip, uh, Jim Beheim, uh pissed off at the local Syracuse reporters. And what, the point I guess I'm trying to make is I don't think you can judge people, players, coaches on a s little segment like this. When you start judging people on a little segment, I think you're really on just very poor journalistic grounds. All right, so right off the bat, he's saying that you guys have poor uh, journalistic standards. Just, just to begin with, but he's just getting warmed up because moments earlier, he was just talking about like, how West Virginia reacted to the zone. And then he couldn't resist himself. He just started in on these guys. So uh, things uh, moved along, and then he starts bringing up uh, Rick Pitino and how outrageous it was that they had the audacity to point out that he had lost six straight games, now seven straight games, to Rick Pitino. He didn't like it that they'd pointed out that he'd lost six straight before the game. So he went into the game pissed off at the press. So uh, here's uh, Jim Bay. I'm talking about that. Against Rick Pitino was at Providence six, five times and once at Kentucky, we were 6-0 and oh against him. One of his teams went to the Final Four, we beat him three times. So now we're going to all of a sudden put in the paper that I, I lost six straight to Rick Pitino. Why don't we put in, I beat him six straight. Go ahead. That's really good. Once you keep doing that, that's really good. I really appreciate that. And you want to talk about personal? Yeah, it's personal. I don't know, man, because like when he was at Providence, it was like 1990. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe that's not as relevant. <laughs> why is he so bitter, man? What's the, what is he, why does he care? Well, this, it goes back to other things. I think a lot of times, the same thing happened with Tom Jackson when he freaked out about the this prediction in the playoffs in the NFL. Once somebody calls you out, or even if it's the press calling out a guy that's coaching even, he's like, they think their job is in jeopardy. He's like, my record, according to everyone, is that I just lose, and I lose, and I lose, and I lose, man. These guys are coming after me. They're threatening my livelihood, and this way you have to fire back. And it's misguided, but I think that's where the mindset comes from. I know. I just think it's weird that he's like, man, I beat Rick Pitino a bunch of times when I was in college. <laughs> that's when Rick Pitino was at Providence. I mean, all right, great. You beat. But I mean, I don't know, man. It just seems, it just seems, like right now, I'm thinking, like as I was watching this, I'm like, now you're seeming a little petty. Uh, and then he starts getting totally personal because he said it's personal. Him with the Rex Ryan, all these guys think it's personal. Uh, then he starts getting personal and he st starts to be a little back and forth uh, with the reporters here. Uh, and I think that's this clip. It, it's the next one. He starts again talking about the, uh, the snapshots and making a fair point that reporters never get made, which is for like coaches and athletes, we talk about their mistakes. But it's not like everybody ever looks over like a reporter's six or seven bad articles or six or seven bad shows that I have or that Jenk has and saying that that's the body of their work. But anyway, it does get personal, it does get a little petty. Here's the next clip. I don't think it's ever fair to take a snapshot. It's like you write, what, I'll guess, 100 articles a year for the paper? 150, 200. So if somebody looks at six or seven of them and says these, these are bad, this is it, that's, is that good? Is that a good judgment of your career? Well, no. Uh, no, I don't think it is either. I don't think it is either. I really don't. I really don't. I don't think that's the way you judge people or coaches or players. I don't think that's the way you do it. But that's the way it's done around here. I made that little noise at the end. Like he's had enough. He can't bear it. He can't bear it. And then he starts asking these guys specific questions, like he's trying to catch the reporters in a mistake. Like he starts giving them trivia questions. Like, do you know how many games I've won against this coach? Do you? And they're like, no, man, I don't know. And he's like, well, you're really good at your job then, aren't you? 
I, 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 I always find myself defending players and coaches in these type of situations. Because although, yeah, I've never been on that side as far as this high level, you know, with press conferences, people asking me questions. I feel like I, I empathize with them a little bit just because, man, these reporters get very nasty. And readers, who are the majority of people who are judging these guys that they don't know on the court, they listen to reporters and they take their own opinions from these guys. You know, it's weird. Specifically here, I think he's out of line. Except I get what he's feeling. You know, it's like, because he, here it's like, we're, they're doing their job. It's a little indefensible. But he's so frustrated. Yeah, the, the, uh, the hard downside of this is when he can have these feelings. He totally gets totally, to Totally, yeah, I get it. Where he's losing his mind is, man, you can't say it. Back in uh, 19, uh, when was it? I was working at the ABC affiliate in D.C. I think it was uh, 1990, 1991, and I was covering the Georgetown Hoyas. It's John Thompson. And I was young, and I was intimidated to just be covering anybody, let alone John Thompson. I mean, who was just threatening and menacing to reporters it had nothing to do with the fact that he was a six foot ten black guy. He was just he had no interest in talking to the press in any way. He was always sweating. He's gigantic. You know, and he kept the press away. He had very specific rules for his players. So I was asked by ESPN, because they had the affiliation with ABC and we were an ABC station, to go out there and ask him, the team was fourteen and oh, how that team compared to the nineteen eighty five team, I guess it was, or eighty four team that won the national championship, whichever one it had won. And it started 14-0. and 0. I think it was 84, and the 85 team, I think, lost to Villanova. So the 84 team that won the national championship. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a kid. I'm so nervous. So I'm like, I'm like, it's a press conference. I'm like, and I still have trouble, like, you know, talking for a long time without swallowing. But still, it was like, I'm like, <clears throat> uh, Coach Thompson, uh, how, do you, how, do, how, how, how does this team, how does this team compare to the, the 1984 team, right? Nothing bad even happened yet. Right, nothing bad, right? And he's like, he just stares at me. He's got the towel, you know, and he's sweating. It's after a game. And he's like, son. He doesn't like comparing teams ever. He's like, son, it is certainly your right and your prerogative to ask a question like that. But it is my right not to answer it. And everybody laughs, has a good old laugh at it. And I'm like, mm, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably, you know, I think we sent it to ESPN. It's, it's a great soundbite, actually. But, uh, all right, so anyway, back to Jim uh, Beheim. So then, uh, so then he starts doing the thing that everybody does, which is the world is against me. Everybody says I'm done. Even though, I, who says this guy's done? But he decides because it's like an internet posting. And the internet, if you're on television or you're in sports, don't, for the love of God, don't read comments on the internet because everybody hates you and everybody says you're a, you know, I read the, I'm a UCLA fan, I read the UCLA blogs. Everybody says Ben Howland can't recruit anymore. He's done. Modern players don't like that slow down defense first style. Howland's done. He's an idiot. Where's UCLA's next coach coming from? We got to get rid of him. He's horrible. He's done. He went to three straight Final Fours three years ago. Forget it. He's done. So anyway, Beheim does it. Nobody likes me. Everybody says I'm done. Here's the next clip. People write and say, uh, you know, he's, he's lost. He's too old. I've heard that. It's been written. It's been said. Jeez, I'm, I am. I'm eight, ten months older than I was when I won Coach of the Year in the country. I must have really got hit by something in the last ten months, huh? There's your psh. So again, it's the me against the world. Everybody's against me. Nobody's against you. Everybody thinks you're awesome. You won a national championship. All right, so then here's my favorite one. You'll love this, Jared, because it's the Jews clip. Jim Bay had, Jim Bayham doesn't say anything about the Jews. Everybody calm down. But it's the random bringing someone into it to get mad at for no reason, the way people do with the Jews. Like they'll be ripping on Mexicans or ripping on blacks. It'll be some horrible racist rant against someone who this group has a beef with. And then all of a sudden, they'll be like, oh, yeah, and I also hate the Jews. <laughs> they just hey, don't get the Jews. Throw the Jews in. They didn't do anything in this beef. But as always, you can throw the Jews in. And here, uh, for no uh, reason at all, uh, he brings in uh, the head coach at the University of Michigan who had absolutely nothing at all to do with this. So here's Jim Beheim taking out his venom for absolutely no reason on a totally innocent bystander. You don't think they were writing about him? Well, how many is, that, is John Beeline a pretty good coach? Yeah. What's his record against me, Donna? No That's well, then you don't know your business. So, dude, 
What does John Beeline have to do with this conversation? I hope he's friends with him. That's the only thing. I, I, I hope he is too, because first of all, he insults the reporter. Like, what's my record against John Beeline? And the reporter's like, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't know this was a quiz. Because I kick his ass every time <laughs> I see him. I never <laughs> lost to that cheap, horrible, boneheaded motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I, I, dude, I don't know what your record is. I haven't lost to him. That guy sucks. <laughs> I don't know, man. Jim Beheim, calm down, man. Everybody thinks you're off. Okay, you went through a rough. Everybody. Please.